Welcome back to the LNX files. As always, this is a safe space for all things spooky. And today we're going to use these tarot cards to do a wellness check on Kristen Dunst, Jesse Plemons. No one asked me to do this video. Here we go. Okay, so like I said, no one asked me to do this video. I just thought of it because Kirsten Dunst and Jesse Plemons are like kind of trending, kind of, maybe, barely. So they're doing another film together, Civil War. Didn't they do The Power of the Dog together? I don't know. I didn't see it. Title is too long. I was like, I can't watch a film that has such a long title. And if you think I, I'm a jerk for making that decision, put it in the comments. Let me know if that film is worth watching. But yeah, they're a husband and wife duo. They're both actors. Uh, different career tra trajectory. So as we know, Kirsten Dunst came, came up as a kid. And Jesse Plemons came up as an adult actor. And so I remember the first time I saw him, I was like, oh, that guy has an interesting look. Saw him on Breaking Bad. And then these two joined forces. And he's, you know... Her name has probably exponentially more recognition than his does, but, you know, they seem to be doing well, you know, pairing up on these projects. So are they astrologically compatible? Let's take a look. So we've never done a, a video on Kirsten Dunst. No one's ever asked me. We should do a video on her, on her and Jake Gyllenhaal, and why they didn't work, because they did in their early 20s before he got weird. I would like to do that video, mental note, okay? So, so she is a Taurus, Leo rising, moon in Leo. Okay, so someone who can really handle fame. And if you think about it, we've never really heard any stories about like scandals with her, have we? You know, no big drama with her, and that's kind of someone who's got Leo rising, moon in Leo, sun in Taurus. So, we have uh, a certain degree of mutual reception between the lights, meaning like th her sun is in a place where the moon is exalted, where the moon can do its greatest good in Taurus, in Taurus. Her moon is in Leo, which is ruled by the sun. So what this would s suggest to me is someone who's like very intuitive and adaptable. What's also interesting about her chart is that she has three malefic planets. Saturn, Pluto, and Mars. So these are planets that signify challenges in life, speed bumps in life. She has three of them all hanging out in her third house in Libra. And they're all in retrograde. And I was like, gosh, I mean, that had me looking up, that had me looking up her childhood really quickly. I was like, what went on? And there's been some stuff alluded to, like her parents' divorce, separation. The third house rules communication, it rules siblings, cousins, aunts, uncles. Uh, short distance travel. It's kind of like the junk drawer house in astrology. It rules a bunch of different stuff. So I, th I thought that was interesting. Like she has alluded to, you know, growing pains as a child actor, just growing pains and s certain tumultuous things uh, about her childhood without giving up any specifics. What is interesting is that the ruler of her third house, which is Libra, where all those malefics are hanging out, is also the ruler of her 10th house, Taurus. So Venus rules Libra and it rules Taurus. Taurus is the sign that rules her 10th house of public accomplishments, public achievement. It's the highest heights you can get in her career. So the ruler of that house, Venus, is in Pisces. Venus is exalted in Pisces, meaning Venus can do its greatest good and its greatest good fortune in that sign. So that's where she has it placed in her chart. So it's not just that she has a benefic in a key area. She has it in a place where it can do its highest, highest amount of good, which I thought was very interesting. And her second house ruler, Mercury, second house rules money and things of value in the chart, is in her 10th house, which would symbolize like this is someone who makes a lot of money from their job, which basically checks out. And she had, you know, from quite a young age, really. So Jesse Plemons, we don't know his rising sign. That doesn't surprise me, but he is an Aries moon in Libra. So Aries, Taurus, just based on the sun signs, I would say no. Uh, with something like that, you know, you have light, you, the, the sun, the signs are in aversion to each other. So on the wheel of the zodiac, they're right next to each other. So they can't really see each other, but there are key elements here that are suggesting compatibility. Okay. So the fact that like she's a Taurus framed by a fire sign, framed by Leo is going to do well with his Aries sun. 
he's a Libra moon, moon in Libra, that's going to do well with, with her ascendant and her moon in, in Leo, because Libra sextiles Leo. So while we don't have a big gasp of compatibility here, we have strong indicators already that there's going to be a great deal of harmony. What's also interesting about Jesse is that he also has a stellium of malefics. Like I said, Kirsten has three. He's got four. He's got Mars, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune can be malefic at times. You know, it can obscure and fogify, is that a word? Make nebulous situations, misrepresent situations. So technically Uranus and Neptune can go either way. But the four of those planets together in one house, in Capricorn in his chart, that would suggest to me that they have some sort of like common history that they were able to really connect on. Like my guess would be like there was something in childhood that was like rocky for both of them and like that that was a, some sort of foundation from which to build their bond. Because that's just really rare to have all those malefics hanging out in one sign and then to see two people who are married who both have that to me is very telling, and I think that was something that they connected over. So yeah, let's see how these crazy kids are doing. All right, Kirsten, Jesse, Kirsten, Jesse, helping or hurting the situation, and where's the energy heading? I mean, I assume this is gonna be a boring spread, you know, like they're, they're in love, they have two kids, whatever. Okay, Kirsten's external vibe towards Jesse. Okay, all right, I mean, this happens, like five of cups in reverse. So, you know, this is a card of healing, of just like letting go of any mild hurts. Did they have friction recently? Maybe. You know, this could be like the recent past, the ancient past, who knows. Um, this is a card you want in reverse because it's, it's about just like releasing wounds of the past. And these may not necessarily have anything to do with him. You know, sometimes when you become a parent, like it brings up your old childhood wounds. Okay, let's keep pulling. Jesse's external vibe towards Kirsten. Hmm. This is weird. So we got the full card in reverse. So there's something that he's having cold feet about, okay? Upright, this is a card of like taking that journey with you, jumping into the red mist. It's an optimistic card. It's a, it's a card of great courage and like moving forward. So when this card comes up in reverse, it's either like, I don't want to move forward with you. I don't feel confident or safe or invested in that, which I doubt is a case because they're married and they have kids. Or it could be like there's something he might be trying to pump the brakes on. It might be like having another child, embarking on another like project together, or starting their own production company. Maybe they've already done that, but something like he's just, like I said, pumping the brakes on, interestingly enough. Okay. Kirsten's internal vibe towards Jesse. All right. So, I mean, we do see this come up for a lot of couples who are together long term. So we got the three of pentacles. So this often comes up as like the marriage counseling card where it's like three people coming together with their different skill sets trying to build something very lofty. Now, this could be literal. These two do work together a great deal. You know, we've seen that happen. Are they trying to build a production company or do they already have a production company? They're trying to push it forward, have more control over their careers together, joining forces. That could that absolutely checks out with everything that we know about them and it could be more of a work card. It could also be like we're seeing a marriage counselor. Sure. Okay. Jesse's internal vibe towards Kristen. Oh, interesting. Okay, I mean, this checks out. I mean, Queen of Pentacles. So he views this woman as a queen but he may also just be cognizant of the fact that, you know, his wife makes more money than him. And for Aries men, that's not their ideal situation. It's not like, oh, I wanna marry a woman that makes me feel a little emasculated. Like, the Queen of Pentacles is the queen who's like, financially abundant, in touch with reality, stable and practical. All the things we know about Christian Dunst as a Taurus, right? All of this checks out, but like, it's interesting that this is coming up as something like on his mind. Um, something that it's in his conscious energetic field because we know that she absolutely is more abundant. She probably has a much higher net worth than him. Especially when they first started dating. Like, where did he take her? I hope someplace really nice. Okay, what is helping or hurting the situation? Okay, all right. We, I mean, what we know. So we got the emperor. So we often interpret the emperor as men doing what men want. And that's absolutely an interpretation of this card. 
But the card also means just like tradition, structure, the old fashioned way of doing things. So they are married, you know, they're married, they have children, they have shared assets. That is in many ways very old fashioned. So sometimes this card will come up for just like, you know, the traditional marriage is holding them together. What's helping them is the structure that they have, the legally binding commitment. So if they've been going through any tough times or any sort of like friction, you know, no one's going anywhere because they have that binding contract. Okay. And where's the energy heading? Okay. I mean, this is all kind of non-eventful. So we got the moon card in reverse. So basically what that means is like what we see is what we get. So upright, there's a card of like, hey, be careful. Use your intuition. Use your gut. Go with confidence. Be brave. And try not to let anything attack you in the night. Like, things are being hidden from you. Things are being obscured. That's why you really have to go with your gut on this one. With this card in reverse, it's like, no, you can trust the physical world. You can trust your five senses. What you see is what you get. Typically, that's what that, that means. Because we're dealing with a married couple that already has kids, you know, this does have to do with, like, the menses, menstruation, mothers, mother karma. Like, is anything about this, about, like, maybe having a baby or not having a baby? You could interpret the cards that way for like, you know, the thing of value. The pentacle here is about another child. This is about like trying to get pregnant, trying to get pregnant as with a fertility clinic. Like you could view that in this way. That would be uh, open to that interpretation. But I really view this more in terms of like their work and their productions together because that we do know. And you know, it's not like a husband and wife just create a production company and they're both famous and everything's great. Like, they still have hiccups and hurdles and obstacles and things that they have to get through. They can put stress on the marriage, which is what I think we're seeing here. So, uh, that's what I've got for you guys. Comment below. Let me know your thoughts on this situation. Do you find Jesse Plemons attractive? Put it in the comments. Like and subscribe. And as always, we'll do this again.